everybody welcome back to the channel if this video sounds like I'm supposed to burst out in tears it's probably because I am I'm gonna edit out if I start crying I'm gonna edit it out I don't wanna cry on camera I've been crying for like two days now um, my dog of 11 years lucky I'm gonna insert a few pictures here he went over the rainbow bridge yesterday and it was horrible back on our anniversary 1024 me and my husband's anniversary he was at the pet sitter and he hurt his um hurt his gum and when they went ran test all that they diagnosed him with cancer i already knew it he had lumps everywhere but they made it official with blood work and they did scans and all that stuff and saw a tumor growing. And on Easter, me and my husband was gonna be at family's house all day. I sent them back to the pet sitter and when he was over there, um, he started getting sick. Come to find out the tumor had ruptured when we picked him up that evening. Um, when we picked him up that evening he wouldn't eat and I had said for years he was 100% food motivated when he stopped eating it's time for him to go and I make homemade food for him because in January he, wouldn't, he wasn't able to eat dog food anymore every time he'd take a bite he'd throw it up I even tried the can I switched it up you know all natural Rachel Ray and all that and no, he would throw it all up. So I started making him homemade dog food. He ate it just fine. He started throwing up half of that at the pet sitter. He would eat the fish and the rice. He could digest that. But the vegetables, he couldn't, which he's been eating fine for, you know, like four months now, three, four months now. So after she told me some of his symptoms, I did my Google search and out of like seven out of seven of the symptoms he had like six of them so I decided that morning Tuesday morning to take him to the vet first thing when they open and I told my husband you know you're going in late because we got to take him to the vet so we got him he was fine that night he just laid in his kennel no pain no whining no nothing we put him in a truck to take him to the vet and of course the one day after the year there's traffic even though we don't touch a freeway um, ran into some traffic he was in the back seat wrapped up in a blanket and he started just howling like he never had before and jerking around and then he like pooped on himself a bunch of black pooped he was wrapped up in a blanket because she told me that was one of the symptoms. Um, and then he started panting. And we finally got to the bed. And I kept running in there. And they were like, give her one minute. Give her one minute. And I'm like, he's howling. He's in pain. You know, um, he just pooped. And the last, the final thing was when he started having seizures, they came out. She checked it. He had a faint heartbeat. They took him inside. Um, I, I threw the sheet that he had pooped on in the bed of the truck, grabbed my purse, and when I walked through the door, she said his heart stopped. And of course, we just cried and cried. We had him 11 years since he was three months old. He was over 11 years old. He would have been 12 in September, but horrible. I knew it was going to happen, but... I mean, from when we left the house to the vet was maybe 10, 15 minutes, even in the traffic. And I mean, it, it happened quick. I mean, really, really quick. So, yesterday, I was, of course, sad, depressed, crying. My aunt was like, no, y'all don't need to be at home. Go out. We went out, movie, dinner. You know, walked around antique malls, all that good stuff, and nothing helped really. So 
I was sitting at home, our girl dog, when we got home, we had two dogs. Lady, she's been, he's been there for her since she was like six weeks old. She's eight now. She turned eight the day before Valentine's. So his, her whole life, he's been there. She knew something was up. She, she knew something was up. Dogs were smart. So we went home, you know, petted her. I started, you know, cleaning up stuff. My husband was saying, leave it. I was saying, no, I don't want to see it. It's depressing. So I cleaned up his bed, washed his bed, took his kennel to the garage, cleaned his blankets, all that stuff. And she knew something was up. So we took her to the pet sitter because the pet sitter has other dogs for her, you know, to play with, make some friends. And uh, we were going to go out and we didn't want to just leave her in the kennel by herself. She's not used to being by herself at all. So we took her to the pet sitter, dropped her off for the day. We're going to go pick her up and we just got to get used to just having her. And she just got to get used to just being us without him. So I was sitting at the house by myself. My husband's at work. Uh, she's at the pet sitter. I was like, I'm going to make like a big giant wreath, memorial wreath for Lucky. And I came up here to the warehouse just so I'm not sitting in the house crying all morning. Mind you, I've been doing that already, but I'm going to make a big, crazy memorial wreath for him. And I decided why not turn it into a, a project for a video. Um, it's probably not going to be uploaded this week because I had posted in my community on Instagram that was going to do a video this week so it's probably going to be up for next Tuesday um I don't know yet I might if I finish it but I was going to have some pictures printed off I got of course a ton of pooch pictures with um Lucky so I'm going to go and get my supplies I think I'm going to have to end up going to Hobby Lobby for some ribbon and maybe some floral and I'm trying to decide if I want it to be a greenery base or just a round base it's gonna be it's gonna be big and I'm gonna have pictures printed out and I have like a little collage photo frame I'm either gonna use that or attach individual pictures around it but I'll figure out something y'all know how I like twing stuff so I'm gonna wing it and let's go and pick out some mesh. Okay, the colors I wanted to use was like dark brown, light brown, black, uh, and maybe um, burlap. So I wanted to use burlap might be just the light brown, depending on what color the burlap is. So. Here's a few so far. I'm going to narrow it down. Let me just grab my browns and grab the black and white also. So here are some of the colors that I may use. So I'm thinking this one here. This one is dark brown with some light brown stripes in it. Let me move over to the table. The light's better over there. I was thinking about painting the white uh, heart, the antique color, but I don't know. And I also thought about adding trim. I don't know, I might just leave it how it is. Yeah, I might just leave it how it is. But this will be the centerpiece of my wreath. I was thinking about maybe this picture here. 
him just showing all his glory <laughs> as the picture to put in the center but I have a few more to choose from I didn't want to use the one where I took of him um, the day before he died or I could not put the picture and just this right here maybe the little doggy last will and testament no I think I want a picture instead so It's probably going to be this one. This is when he was just like seven months old. In his prime. But that's what I'm going to do for that. And this little collage here, it can hold six pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this and let it dry. And then I will be back. Probably will be another day. Okay, y'all, I am going to start prepping my base, cut off the tag, and then floof it out, which is pull out the branches. I finished painting my um, my picture frame over there and it's drying and I painted my little wooden pieces so this is what this is looking like so far so what I'm going to do now is I am going to get this one and I'm gonna make some bubbles and I'm gonna make these bubbles about about 12 inches it might be too big To about 10 inches. So the next thing I'm going to do is make me some cruffles. But first I'm going to even this out. Y'all, this is so depressing. <laughs> it really is. Oh, but I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. Okay, y'all, instead of cruffles, 
I'm going to do some curls, 10 inch curls, because I want it to be big and full. So, let's turn these cruffles into curls. have 13 white ones and 13 of the brown um I had that extra little piece that was 10 inches so I just went ahead and made a, another 10 piece brown one but I'm going to start attaching these curls to the wreath here I I'm thinking about changing the angle let me let me change this angle Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just curl these up. Let me get my safety my not safety pins, my uh, clips. So this is ten inches and I'm just gonna make some curls with this. So Just like this and then clip it and then I'm going to get a brown one here and just curl this up. This jute is really good on not fraying like crazy like the other mesh. So what I'm going to do. It's just this here and the points cut this little piece. That's how that one is. Now I'm going to go all the way around. And when I finish up, I'll be back to show y'all what I have. trying to figure out how I'm short some white to go back and look at the video and see how many I I cut but oh, this is my last white one here I thought maybe I dropped some but I don't know I have two extra pieces so oh I had five I cut them in half, made 10, and then the extra one was 11. Okay. I thought I was going crazy. I was looking all on the floor for it, and oh well. So. And 
this is how it's looking. Got the vase down. Now I'm going to make my bundles. Got two extra pieces of this. Okay. I have six, now five ribbons here. I'm not sure how much I have. Let me check something first. Okay, I was looking at uh, my centerpiece, seeing how I was going to attach it. Basically, it's for the wall, so there's a big, uh, not a big, but a metal piece. You know, the one with the little teeth to hang up on, on nails on the wall. That's on there like steel, and it's really sturdy. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably get either some ribbon or just grab one of the branches to hang it. But I'll show y'all when I do that. But right now... Let me get out these different ribbons. So These two here I have plenty of. These are whole rolls. This one I think I have enough also. And these two. This one is full also. I just bought this one. These two I don't know. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the ribbon for my bow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut I want a big bow on this so I want each loop to be seven inches so I'm gonna cut 21 inches of the ribbon And I only want the tail to be maybe about six inches, so. So I'm going to cut two pieces of each one of these. So it's going to be a big full bow. One of these I might not use. I don't know yet, but... zoom in so y'all can see what I'm doing so I got these two cut and let's see what I have left here okay so I'm going to make eight inch pieces out of these for my bundles sure about this one. This one's kind of lightweight. No. I'm going to say no to this one. I want something that's pretty sturdy and heavy. I had um, 
I had too many, so this is a bundle of all four of them. I had three bundles of all four of this one, um, this one, and then this one, oh, well, somewhere else on here. Yeah, this one. These two, plus this one right here. These are bundles of all four of them. And now I'm going to make my bow. And for my bow, I am going to need a zip tie and a Chanel stem. So what I'm going to do, I want my loops to be seven inches. So what I'm going to do is fold this over. Fold this to the 15 inch mark and then I'm gonna go up one and then I'm gonna do this and keep it right here. So go over to the 15. and then squish it at the 14. And I'm gonna do this for all of these. Make sure you're doing this. You are, that you have the uh, ribbon right facing. So, see, there's a bad side to this ribbon. And there's the good side. Make sure the good side is up. And then I just put it right here. See, good side, bad side. So flip it down, face down. Bring it over to the 15 mark. Go up one. One inch to give you a seven inch loop. And then do it all again. And then I just snip off this. Fluff it out. Let me dovetail these. Forgot to dovetail my bow. Okay. It is time to fire up the glue stick and to cut my floral down. Oh, so. Got the glue stick heating up. And it's time to cut my floral down. So first thing, these right here, I'm going to cut these, these flowers on this garland. It's gonna get cut apart.
okay this is what it's looking like so far and I have to fluff out my bow here but I'm gonna do that last so here's my wreath I'm going to add my floral where I want it I'm gonna shorten these stems but oh, I want Let's see, which part do I want to be the top? I'll tie something here so I'll remember where my top is. So that's my top. So I'm gonna just add my greenery. I started placing my floral just about where I want it so this is the bottom down here so I'm thinking I want these two to come out the side of the bottom there these two here I like that and then have some roses here and then put another one here and then I'm thinking, you may move this one, basically, like in here. Like in here. Like that. So let me just start placing this where I want it. I'm going to cut it down and place it where I want it. I'm just supposed to decorate it, so. together I'm just gonna hang it from the top I don't want to glue it or anything like that on the back here has that So my bow I think I'm going to place my bow 
right about here. One in the middle. It's going to be at the bottom somewhere, my bow. And then as for up there, let's see how. So look at this right there, zip tie colored. center there. Okay. Let me go ahead and add my bow. I should have left the Chanel stem there so I could attach that. So I had to fish through another zip tie to connect it. So Okay. I finished. So let me go and move this over so y'all can see it better. Okay, everybody. Here's the finished product. This is my memorial wreath for my dog, Lucky. He, he died yesterday morning, April 2nd. And... This will be going over his spot in my house. So this is be uh, put indoors in my bedroom. <laughs> but let me give y'all a close up. And that's a picture of him in his prime. He was like about seven months old on that picture. But y'all, this took me a while to do, and it was well worth it. Anything for my stinker, but y'all have any comments or questions, drop them below. Um, I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.